Hi everyone, for those of you don't, who don't know me, I'm Dr. Merhut with Elite Sports of Spine Chiropractic. I'm so excited that you decided to join me today for this webinar. You have made the first step to a healthier immune system and overall a healthier lifestyle. So give yourself a pat on the back for that. I know we already gave you a bonus for signing up today, which was the full body workout routine that requires no equipment. But as an added bonus for showing up for today's event, I'll be giving you a couple more freebies throughout the webinar. You don't want to miss downloading these, so make sure you stick around for the whole event. I'll be posting them as we go through the information. But wait, there is more. As a second bonus, we are giving you the opportunity to schedule a one-on-one -on -one health consultation with yours truly, me, Dr. Merhut. If you feel overwhelmed with all the information we're about to give you, it's easy to set up an appointment where we can discuss your specific needs and come up with a plan specifically just for you. And there's even more good news. Many insurance companies are now covering the cost of this service. There may be no out-of-pocket costs for you. So feel free to check, check with your individual plan after you schedule the appointment. My promise to you is that you will leave this webinar with a plethora of information that you can start implementing today. But if you need extra help, feel free to book an, book an appointment with me. Without further ado, we are going to get this PowerPoint up and get you lots of great information. So as we get started, the four essentials to boost your immune system, daily lifestyle changes for optimal health. Like I mentioned, by the, by the end of this presentation, you will have things from each category that you can change today. Making some of these changes will help you boost your immune system and live an overall healthier life. Now, who doesn't want that? So the four essentials, which you might have already known, are diet, exercise, sleep, and stress relief. All of those play a major role in how weak or strong your immune system is. There are many things that control the strength of your immune system, but these four things have total control. We all know these four things are good for us, but how many have actually pieced all four together? While boosting your immune system may not 100% protect you from getting sick, it could be the difference from being sick for two days or for two weeks. So let's start off with the diet. One of the simplest concept, concepts, yet so many people get confused when what you should and you shouldn't eat. So I'm gonna break it into two separate categories. There are foods that cause inflammation, inflammatory foods, and there are foods that fight against inflammation, anti-inflammatory foods. In relation to the immune system, sticking with the anti-inflammatory foods just makes sense that it would help your immune system. In most sicknesses, illnesses, and disease, inflammation is at the core of it all. If we reduce the amount of inflammation in the body, we have an overall human being. But there's a little disclaimer. Everyone is a little bit different in their bodies and what they can tolerate. So some people have a stronger sensitivity to certain foods compared to others. And that's why some people have allergies to eggs, milk, cheese, you know, different things like that. So let's start off with your inflammatory foods. With your inflammatory foods, your number one is gonna be sugar. Really anything that ends in O's, high fructose, corn syrup, sucrose, maltose, uh, there's many more. As you can see, all these have tons of sugar that are loaded up with them. Next, we're gonna move on to trans fats. Most people are familiar with a lot of these foods. Uh, these uh, are a lot of things that are people craving. Some of you may be even having popcorn right now. Next, we're getting to the refined carbs. So gluten is uh, one of those, and as well as all these that are pictured here. Most people have heard of MSG, which is monosodium glutamate. This is a flavor enhancer found in most processed meat, canned veggies, and sometimes soups. Then we have dairy, uh, which casein is a protein within the dairy, which a lot of people are, are intolerant of. Then aspartame, which another one that people, a lot of people have heard of, which is an artificial sweetener. Unfortunately, alcohol fits under this category of inflammatory foods, but stick around because I'm gonna give you a couple tips on if you do choose to uh, drink alcohol, uh, what better options are. And then lastly, processed meats. So things like bacon, cold cuts, uh, those types of things. So out of those, uh, I'm gonna basically narrow it down in, in, into a core four. 
So your core four inflammatory sen uh, sensitive foods, if you choose anything, this is really what we want you to avoid. And that's gonna be your processed grains, your added sugar, your omega-6 fatty acids, which are oftentimes your vegetable oils that are listed here, and then dairy. Next, we're gonna get into the anti-inflammatory foods. Uh, so these are ones that you're really gonna wanna focus on eating in your diet. Um, like I said before, inflammation is at the core of most disease. So if you can reduce your inflammation levels by eating a lot of these foods on a regular basis, then you're gonna be better off. So starting off, we have berries. Then we have fatty fish, which are oftentimes high in your omega-3 fatty acids. We have broccoli, avocados, mushrooms, peppers, tomatoes, green tea, grapes, a spice called turmeric, extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil, cherries, and then personal favorite of mine, which is dark chocolate. And who wouldn't like to have dark chocolate on that list? Now, like I said earlier, we're going to give a couple freebies away. So with that, uh, I'm, I will hold off to the end of this uh, section, but one of those freebies is going to be 10 foods you should eat and 10 foods you should avoid. So make sure you um, download that once I post it. I'll be posting it here in just a little bit. So this health webinar is basically on immune boosting things that you can do to implement in your life. So we're gonna break it down a little bit more into the actual foods out of some of those that we've already talked about, plus a couple more that um, really help boost the immune, immune system overall. So out of that category, we already, did, already listed mushrooms. Um, and mushrooms, as a medicinal mushroom, they're fantastic for uh, immune boosting and an inflammation fighting superfood. Next on the list is lemons and limes. They are one of the best sources of vitamin C and antioxidants and also help alkalize and cleanse your body. Moving on to apple cider vinegar. A lot of people have seen this in stores before. With apple cider vinegar, you wanna make sure that it has the mother. So if you read uh, on the bottom of that, it has the words in parentheses, the mother. Basically what that means is there's probiotics included within the actual drink itself. They provide a great disinfectant support against the most resistant bacterial strains and viruses and offer an antioxidant support as well. Next on the list, garlic. It can help reduce inflammation, support your immune system, and effectively fight infections, not only just good for fighting off vampires. Next on that list, we have ginger, which is one of the most potent medicinal sub spices that helps reduce inflammation, boost immune health, improves sore throat and lowers pain levels. So that's potentially why you might have drinking ginger ale when you were sick, when you were a kid. Olive oil is next on the list. This is a great so source of monounsaturated, or mono, yeah, monounsaturated healthy fat, which is incredible for your immune system. The only caveat to this is I don't recommend cooking with olive oil at a high heat. Its heat index, index is very low uh, at about maybe 400 degrees, somewhere around there. Uh, so, you wanna cook with other types of oils. Avocado oil is a great alternative to cook with uh, that doesn't have a taste at all. Next on the list is gonna be onions. Similar to garlic, onions are powerful infection fighters that boost your immune system uh, and reduce inflammation. And then the last one I have listed here is bone broth, which is becoming more and more popular. Uh, it's rich in uh, vitamins and minerals and soothing for respiratory conditions. So if your grandmother or your mom ever made you chicken noodle soup, when you were sick. Uh, the main reason they did that, they may not have known it, but actually using the chicken bones in that, in that uh, chicken noodle soup uh, was one of the reasons with all the rich vitamins and minerals that helped you get over your, your sickness quicker. So next, uh, focusing a little bit more on the antimicrobial, antiviral spices, herbs, and then a couple other foods I, I threw in here. But uh, just to go through them real quick, we have oregano oil. A lot of you may have heard of some of these and then some of them you may not have heard of. Peppermint, turmeric uh, again, echinacea, which is oftentimes used in a tea, St. John's wort, scufalina, or scufalaria, pardon me, rosemary, manuka honey, and elderberry. And then we also have more of the food types, which are the leafy greens, 
your cruciferous vegetables, which can be broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower, peppers, sweet potatoes, squash, there's garlic again, and of course, we have ginger again. Now, next we get into what you should drink. So, covered a lot about what you should eat, but people oftentimes have questions about what you should actually drink. The general recommendation that we're going to give you is half your body weight in ounces. So, for example, if you weigh 100 pounds, you should drink between 50 to 100 ounces of water a day. The more active you are, the more you should actually drink. Um, you can drink things like uh, tea, which could be green tea, echinacea, ginger, peppermint, all those things that help support the immune system. Uh, easy ways to get that in if you have trouble is drinking a glass first thing in the morning. So start your day off drinking a glass of water. Uh, another way to do it is drinking a glass right before a meal. Drinking a glass right before a meal, one, that helps fill up some of the space in your stomach so you're not actually going to eat as much. So it's also a way to help you lose weight. And then uh, flavoring it with lemon and lime. We already talked about how lemon and lime are strong in vitamin C and good with immune bo boosting. So try to infuse some water or infuse some fruit into your water and uh, that can help out with your immune system. And then lastly, uh, by drinking water about 15 minutes a day during times where you're trying to avoid getting sick, what that's actually gonna do is gonna flush any bacteria or viruses that are in your mouth down into your stomach. And then the good bacteria that are in your stomach uh, as well as the immune system, which is in your stomach. And get this, 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. I'm going to say that again. 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So that's why I spent so much time on the foods that can help with lowering inflammation and, and helping boost your immune system, as well as just this water intake. You know, drinking every 15 minutes will help cleanse your palate, get all the viruses and bacteria that potentially are in your mouth into your gut, and then your gut will take care of it from there. And then lastly, with uh, water, I always recommend getting a filtration system to help with getting toxins and impurities out. Uh, so now, like I said before, we're going to get into the alcohol, but right before we get into the alcohol, uh, I want to touch quick on juice. Uh, a lot of people think juice is good for you, which in a sense it can be. It does have a lot of good vitamins, minerals, things like that. Uh, sometimes it's fortified with good things, but juice when it's made, it's actually, they take the fiber out and fiber is actually what you need um, anytime there's high sugar or high carbohydrate content. So you're better off eating the actual fruit itself than drinking the fruit juice. So I tell people when I'm counseling them on any type of nutrition is if you're drinking any type of juice, just completely cut it out because you're better off eating the fruit. And then there's other sources and other drinks that you could be drinking that are far better for you. Now into the good stuff. Alcohol, my top two, if you're going to drink it, is going to be red wine. It's rich in antioxidants. It helps improve heart health, and it helps lower inflammation. It has in, in, anti-inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein. And then the second one I'd recommend is tequila. And if you're going to go for tequila, then opt for 100% agave because there are some brands that use grains. We already talked about how grains can cause inflammation. Um, go for on the rocks, maybe with a splash of soda, a splash of lime. Uh, add some sugar-free syrups. Uh, but those are my recommend recommendations on alcohol if you choose to do so. If you're mad about my alcohol recommendations, I'm sorry. Take it with a grain of salt, especially the tequila and maybe lime. Okay, moving on. So supplements for immune health. Um, a lot of people ask me what type of supplements they should take to boost their immune system. Well, let's get into a couple of those. First and foremost, we're going to have probiotics. Now, probiotics, I already mentioned that 70% of your immune system is in the gut. If you aren't replenishing your probiotics, uh, then a lot of bad bacteria are going to overcome the good bacteria in your gut. So by taking a probiotic, it's the good bacteria that are going to um, help with just general immunity and everyday functions. Uh, when we're taking probiotics, we want to shoot for a 5 to 10 billion organism per capsule. That sounds like a lot, but it's 5 to 10 billion organisms per, ca per capsule. And you want a variety of different organisms. So different organisms, is organi organ try to say that five times fast. Organisms are lactobacillus, bifidobacterian strains. There's different fungus, which could be Saccharomyces boulardii, different soil-based strains, uh, a lot of your bacillus strains, bacillus subtilis. Bacillus coagulans and Bacillus leucheformans. 
the variety is what we're looking for here, but uh, probiotics is probably the number one. Next, we got L-lysine. A lot of people know that this is more antiviral. So L-lysine, you got 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day is general recommendation. Moving on, we got fish oil. Uh, specifically, I'd probably say Arctic cod liver oil uh, has EPA, DHA. We want at least 250 to 500 milligrams a day, but you can go as much to 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams can be safe. Uh, next on the list is echinacea. Uh, this can be in the form of a tincture, a spray, a tablet, or like we said earlier, a tea. Uh, I would say between 900 to 1,000 milligrams three times a day. This one is pretty much only when you're having symptoms and you're, you actually are sick and you would do it for about 10 days. This is not something that you're going to take on a regular basis. Like this is These supplements, for the most part, uh, are ones that you're going to be taking uh, to help boost immunity in, in, if you're sick. The next one is zinc. Zinc citrate is going to be the one that I'm going to recommend. There's many forms of zinc between 15 and 30 milligrams a day. There's also food sources you can uh, intake to get the zinc, meat, shellfish, legumes like chickpeas, lentils, and beans, you get seeds, could be hemp seeds, pumpkins, sesame seed, and then nuts, pine nuts, cashews, and almonds, and then also eggs have it. Vitamin D, we have vitamin D3 here specifically. Uh, this is something that almost all Americans, if not all Americans, are deficient in. So starting with about 2,000 international units a day, some source, sources will say uh, 100 international units for every 25 pounds of body weight that you have. But along with taking a supplement, just getting sun exposure is important. Uh, and then potentially food sources. So your fatty fishes are high in vitamin D. So mackerel, salmon, herring sardines, you can do egg yolks and mushrooms. And then lastly on this list, we have vitamin C. Uh, I'd recommend about 1500 milligrams a day. Different food sources you could do are yellow bell peppers, guava, lemons and limes we mentioned multiple times, strawberries, papaya, broccoli, kale, different green leafy vegetables, grapefruit, oranges, and kiwi. Next, this is just a little bit of an add-on, but um, everyday supplements. So I said some of those aren't necessarily for every day, but my recommendations for uh, more of an everyday supplement, what you should have in your, your medicine cabinet or your bathroom cabinet, whatever you want to call it, is a multivitamin, vitamin, vitamin D3, magnesium, a good omega-3 fatty acid or fish oil, which has EPA and DHA, CoQ10, a turmeric supplement, your probiotics, and then with the probiotics, if you're not taking a probiotic, then you could actually, oops, there it is. If uh, you're not taking a probiotic or if you don't want to take a probiotic, there's other ways to get it and that's within your food. And different examples of that are fermented foods. You have sauerkraut, fermented veggies, kefir, kimchi, tempeh, miso, kombucha, pickles, apple cider vinegar we mentioned, and even sourdough bread. So those are all op options. I, one thing I would say, if you're gonna buy some of this stuff, especially like sauerkraut, when you're looking at the ingredient list, basically all you need is vinegar, salt, and water. And that's about it that's gonna create the fermented food in the sauerkraut. So don't, no preservatives, no added sugar, none of that. You wanna kind of stay away from that stuff and uh, you'll be in good shape. And then lastly, make sure you have smiles because if you don't have smiles in your, in your regular routine, then uh, you're going to go downhill quick and it can definitely cause sickness. And we'll talk about stress a little bit later, but that's definitely, definitely one of them. So we mentioned earlier the one-on-one -on -one health consultation that you could have. If that was a lot of information for you and you got overwhelmed with it, don't worry because that's what I'm here for. We are now offering one-on-one -on -one health consultations to meet whatever needs you have. If you need some guidance on nutrition, like we just went over, I'd be happy to help. All the other topics I've listed here, you know, exercise, if you have a specific injury, sports injuries, concussion, uh, neck pain, headaches, low back pain, I'm a chiropractor, so that's, you know, my bread and butter. We can discuss different sleep and stress issues, chiropractic care, all that kind of stuff. And then with the consultation, we pretty much come up with a plan of action. If we need to develop an exercise plan for you to do at home, we'll do that. And, uh, and 
basically go from there. So if uh, you have any questions on that, feel free to, you know, shoot a, shoot a message and we can answer any of that stuff. But uh, we'll uh, get to that a little bit later on too. So next we have exercise. So as one of the four essentials, we know exercise is good for us. So let's take a little look on how it affects our immune system. So to start this section off, I want you to start off, I want to start off with, by playing a video that does a good job of explaining how exercise can be good, but also how exercise can be bad. Um, and I did mention that I was going to post that file for you about the foods. So there's that file if you want to download that. And then I'm also going to post the offer that we just talked about with the one-on-one -on -one health consultation. So if you would like to schedule that, there's the link for that. And then to get this video started, how exercise and the immune system play a role together. Cough, colds, and flu, nobody likes to get sick. We do almost anything to avoid it. Herbal remedies, supplements, cold medications, well, runners have another weapon in their arsenal to combat illness. And it's right under their noses. How exercise affects your immune system. Next, on Knowledge and Performance. There's a complex relationship between exercise and your immune system. Let's take a look at how it works. When we exercise, the body releases powerful hormones that improve athletic performance. The problem is that some of these hormones, like adrenaline and cortisol, decrease antibody levels that the body uses to fight invaders like bacteria and viruses. Research on athletes has shown that after hard workout or competition, there's a period of time where antibody levels are decreased. Scientists and MDs think this may represent an open window where the body is at a greater risk of infection. So the most important time to guard against illness and infection is in the first few hours after your workout. But exercise can also strengthen your immune system. There's a J-shaped relationship between training and illness. Simply, moderate exercise will increase your resistance to illness while intense exercise can actually decrease your resistance. Researchers have found that people who exercise four to five times a week at moderate intensity have about half the number of respiratory infections than people who don't exercise. Not only that, but the severity and duration of cold symptoms was lower in those who were exercising. This is partly due to the fact that exercise improves the flow of fluids through your lymphatic system. This means that viruses, bacteria, and toxins are filtered and cleared from your body more effectively. But research has also shown when people exercise very intensely or are under a lot of stress, the incidence of illness actually increases. Your muscles are made of proteins and use glucose for energy, just like your white blood cells the body uses to fight off disease. With hard workouts, your muscles and your immune system may actually be competing for nutrition. So after a hard workout, it's essential to eat carbs and protein to refuel not only your muscles, but also your immune system. Runners tend to have better nutrition, better sleeping habits, and less stress. So stick to your training plan and build your fitness slowly and consistently. That will help strengthen your heart, muscles, and your immune system. Here's some keys to success. Exercise at least 30 minutes a day, especially on high stress days. Ensure that you eat a balanced diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables. Have extra vitamins and minerals if you're traveling or stressed out. Wash your hands and avoid touching your eyes, especially in the hour after you exercise. And plan for extra rest and sleep after hard workouts or races. So that gave you a little bit of a break on hearing my voice for a while, but now I'm back. So a couple things I want to highlight on this video, specifically, uh, after hard work, work, work or just a competition, antibody, 
levels are decreased. And that was why it was actually bad for exercise could be bad for you. There's just too much of it at one time or you're doing too high intense workouts. Um, so that's one thing I want to point out. Next, sticking with moderate intense exercise is most beneficial for the immune system. We're recommending about four to five times a week uh, for at least 30 minutes. The severity and duration of the symptom of, of symptoms in general when you're sick was lower in those that who exercised. And this is due to fluids of the lymphatic system filtering and clearing things more effectively. After the first few hours of a workout, that's when you want to eat and replenish and eating healthy carbs and proteins to refuel is what we're recommending. And then obviously washing your hands is what we recommend as well. So exercise causes white blood cells and antibodies to circulate the body more rapidly. Therefore, they can de detect illness earlier and they might have, than they might have before. This is, there's a slight raise in body temperature when you exercise. So with the slight raise in body temperature, it can kill bacteria. And this is very similar to what happens when you actually have a fever. I talked about too much exercise can stress the body and too much exercise will have negative effects. So proper rest time is definitely important. Regular exercise improves organ function. So things like lung function, cardiovascular health, mood and energy levels by reducing inflammation and building strength within the muscles. We recommend about 20 to 30 minutes a day between, which has been shown to be beneficial. And some of these can include improving circulation, stimulating lymphatic drainage, balance key brain neurotransmitters, reducing stress and tension in the body, improves mood and happiness, and enhance mental, mental clarity and memory, which uh, it can also improve sleep. And then lastly, we were recommending a variety. So mixing up cardiovascular exercise with resistance training uh, and strength training is very important. So you can do things like walking and biking, dancing, CrossFit, Pilates, TRX. Uh, those are just some examples. So a lot of people have problems with motivation when it comes to exercise. So finding something you enjoy. Now, not every exercise is going to be enjoyable, but if you find something you like, you're more likely to do it. So by Signing up for this rep webinar already, you receive the full body workout that doesn't require any, any equipment. So I recommend giving that a try. The five minute rule. So with the five minute rule, this is something I use all the time. Just tell yourself, I'm gonna go do five minutes of exercise. If, if you're not feeling it that day, whatever it may be, go tell yourself five minutes of exercise and that's it. The thing is once you start those five minutes of exercise, your body starts releasing endorphins. Endorphins are those good feel hormones and you're more likely to continue for a longer period of time, finish a workout. Um, I always say a bad workout in your own words or a short workout is better than no work at all. So you're better off doing something than nothing. Next you have easy changes. So these easy changes can be something as simple as, you know, taking the stairs, parking further away at, at the grocery store, at work. Um, I recommend shooting for a step goal. 10,000 steps is a great goal to shoot for. Um, planning it out, putting it in your phone, writing it down. If you have a calendar, a planner, um, it makes you more likely to do it because you won't schedule anything else during that time. Having a workout buddy is great. It keeps you accountable. If you don't have anybody that uh, you think will you know, be a workout buddy with you, uh, you can have a virtual workout buddy. So find a, an online program and, and have someone that's actually taking you through those exercises be your quote unquote virtual workout buddy. And then buy new things. Um, don't tell my wife this, but treat yourself to some new clothes, new shoes, or new fitness tracking watch. Now, the fitness tracking watch is a great piece because um, it's a good motivator. You can see where, where you actually are with things on a day-to-day -day basis. And then a lot of them have th uh, apps that you can sync with other friends. And if you're competitive, then uh, you can get into that and, and do it that way. So if the exercise portion of things was overwhelming or if you just don't feel comfortable at all, uh, again, we're offering the one-on-one -on -one health consultation. So that offer is still posted there if you're interested. So feel free to click on that. Now that we've talked about the nutrition and the exercise, the next thing on the list would be a good night's sleep. So in this section, you will see how important quality sleep can be to your uh, 
to compete to get in a strong immune system. We'll all go, also go over some tips and tricks on how to get a good night's sleep. Uh, but we're going to start off with another short video that's going to explain the impact of the immune system uh, related to viruses. To really boost our immune systems, maybe we just need to get enough sleep. Or is that a total myth? Fact or fiction, if you don't get enough sleep, it can impair your immune system. Believe it or not, we didn't know for certain either way until 2009. Researchers dripped virus into people's nostrils, the common cold virus. Now you'd think if someone squirted virus right up your nose, you'd definitely get sick. But no, it really depends on your immune system. Someone with a cold can sneeze dead in your face, but if you have a good enough immune system, you won't get sick. So in the study, did it depend on how much sleep they've been getting? Fact or fiction? Fact. Those getting enough sleep were three to five times more likely to beat the virus. So as you saw in the video, sleep helps guard against viruses and other harmful pathogens. One in four people experience some type of sleep disturbance. While we sleep, the body creates hormones, proteins, and chemicals in order to fight off disease and infection. Sleep deprivation actually decreases the ability of these substances, leaving us more susceptible to each new virus and bacteria that we encounter. That's probably why it's important to get quality sleep when you're sick, so you can feel better and heal faster. Uh, inflammation, so lack of sleep over time, increases inflammation in the body. We talked about inflammation before with foods, um, but because there's a drop in the production of molecules that counter inflammation, uh, if you're not getting enough sleep, then it uh, predisposes you to getting sick quicker. With autoimmunity, if someone with an autoimmune disorder has a flare-up, uh, it could possibly be due to uh, a lack of sleep and sleep deprivation. So a lack of sleep has been shown to decrease immune self tolerance, which triggers autoimmune disease. So therefore, if you are genetically predisposed to an autoimmune disorder, so if you have the gene pooling that uh, potentially can lead to an autoimmune disorder in yourself, if you're sleep deprived, then you're more likely to develop that autoimmune disorder. And then lastly, with dementia and Alzheimer's, this is a fun fact, but did you know that sleep de deprivation can actually mimic the symptoms of dementia and Alzheimer's? So I always recommend having a sleep study done uh, to help determine, are you actually being diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's, or are you having symptoms of sleep deprivation? So now a couple tips and tricks on how to get some quality sleep. First off, we have make sure you have a comfortable room. Setting your room to a cool temperature, having a comfortable mattress, bedding and pillows. A uh, little tip with bedding and pillows. With the pillow, your neck should have a neutral spine when laying on it, whether you're on your back or on your side. I sit, People ask me what's the best pillow for them. As long as the pillow is supporting your neck in a neutral spine, that's the best pillow for you. So that's the best advice you can give for a pillow. Not one pillow is best for everybody. Sleep in a dark room uh, with blackening shades or curtains is good or using a sleep mask. Avoiding coffee within the eight hours of sleep. This can be key. A lot of people don't know that caffeine is actually keeping you up or, or, or messing with your sleep. So if you have a problem, uh, just cut out comp caffeine completely. And that is probably, or it might even be the reason that when you wake up, you feel like you need that cup of coffee. So your coffee, caffeine intake could be, you know, actually causing the problem, and then you're feeling like you need it to, to fix the problem. And then sun exposure, like we mentioned earlier, um, with vitamin D, uh, leads to increased serotonin. At night, with darker lights, that triggers melatonin. Without sun exposure, your serotonin levels dip, and your body's circadian rhythm just gets all messed up. Couple of more, more sleep tips, exercise regularly. We just talked about exercise. 
but we don't want to exercise too close to bedtime because your body does need time, excuse me, to wind down. And then bright light, if you're using electronics at night, try to use your blue light filters on your phones. If you can get away from the electronics, try to play a board game, read, do a crossword, crossword meditate, or even journaling to help wind yourself down. With napping, uh, napping will screw with your circadian rhythm. Our bodies were designed to rise when the sun rises and to sleep when it's dark. However, if you are trying to catch up on sleep from a busy work week or whatever it may be, it's recommended to do two naps a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, but no more than 30 minutes each. If for some reason you can't get it in the morning and the afternoon, a 20 minute nap at lunch and then one before dinner uh, can suffice as well. And then if you have a routine, having a routine helps you wind down and let your body know you're actually trying to get uh, ready for bed. And with that information, I have six tips for better sleep that I just shared there for you. So feel free to download that along with the 10 foods to eat and avoid that I also shared. And so if sleep something that you're struggling with, feel free to again, click on the link for scheduling a one-on-one -on -one consult and we can talk about that stuff as well. Last but certainly not least, we have stress relief as an important key in keeping your immune system strong. To start this section off too, uh, we're gonna be doing a video, but with this video, it's actually act, an, an activity. And this activity is one of my favorite ways uh, to do stress relief, and it's called box breathing. And this can be done anywhere at any time. So uh, I encourage you to actually participate in the video. It's gonna go through dire the directions on how to do it, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. This technique is practiced by Navy SEALs in their training to help them deal more capably with highly stressful events. Learning to focus on your breath helps to clear the mind and increases your capacity for concentration. Close your eyes. Inhale, sit up tall, lengthen your spine and neck. Exhale, draw your shoulders back and let all the air out. Let's begin. Seal your lips and inhale through your nose for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Hold your breath for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And hold the breath out for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's repeat that three more times. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Pause, two, three, four, five. Continue for two more cycles, counting in your head. Inhale, breathe fully and allow your belly and chest to expand. Hold. Exhale, let all the air out of your lungs. And hold. Last time at your own pace. Let your breath return to its natural rhythm and open your eyes. You can repeat this breathing exercise before any event that requires you to feel calm, focused and clear-headed. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, breathing technique, uh, but for stress in the immune system, 
uh, let's go a little bit into the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is your nervous system's way of coping with stressful situations. When the body is stressed, like running away from a tiger, for example, it releases cortisol and adrenaline, some of your stress hormones. These hormones help increase your heart rate. They open up blood vessels, so it's easier for blood to get to your muscles so you can run away, and increases your breathing rate. All of these help you run away from the tiger faster. The body also boosts the immune system during this time for about three to five days, presumably to help you heal faster if the tiger scratched you or something. If the body stays in the fight or flight response for an extended period of time, it starts to take a toll on the immune system and the body starts to break down. With lymphocytes, uh, these are white blood cells that help fight the help fight off infection. The lower your lymph lymphocyte levels, the more at risk you are for catching a virus and stress will actually decrease your body's lymphocytes. With cortisol, it's also one of your stress hormones that's released in the body. It helps regulate both inflammatory and immune responses in the body. Chronic high levels of cortisol decrease tissue sensitivity, which this leads to uh, higher levels of inflammation, which causes tissue impairment and breakdown of the immune system itself. So now we have a couple activities. We just did the breathing activity, which I hope you enjoyed. Uh, but with breathing, there was the box breathing as well as diaphragmatic breathing. And with diaphragmatic breathing, this is something that is also important to learn if you're going to do the box breathing. A lot of people carry stress in their shoulders, and a lot of this can be due to improper breathing. So if you've ever watched a baby breathe, they breathe with the big belly. That's what I'm talking about. So if you look in the mirror and you see yourself, when you take a deep breath in, your shoulders and your chest re raise up when you're breathing, then you're actually chest breathing. And we'd prefer that you would diaphragmatic breathe or belly breathe. So learning how to do that can be important. Uh, yoga and meditation are two of my favorite ways to stress to do stress relief ac activities. And uh, this is also a reason why I created two handouts for you guys. One of the handouts is seven days to for a yoga plan. Uh, just some YouTube videos that I, I like personally. So there's that that I just shared, as well as seven days to meditate. Uh, you can try that as well. And then as an added bonus in this section, I have 30 days of activities. So if you uh, are looking for new things to do, different ways to stress relief, you can try each one of these a day. Um, we've got 30 days of activities for you to try out. So the next on list, we have a uh, more positive outlook. Having a positive outlook on life can really change everything. We all know, you know, the one thing in those triggers in life that stress us out the most. So finding ways to cope with them will help your immune system and your overall health. Some other activities uh, can include doing, you know, board games, puzzles. If you're competitive like me, you know, the board games might not be a good idea. That might raise your stress levels. But finding a new hobby or playing some games is, is a good way for some people to uh, reduce their stress levels. And then finally, we got one more bonus for you guys for being here. Uh, this is just something in general to help you uh, reduce the risk of getting sick. And that's washing your hands, which you all, we all know. But with washing your hands, uh, let's talk a little bit about hand sanitizer because a lot of people are using hand sanitizer. And a couple of just tips and recommendations, as you can see here, is make sure the hand sanitizer, if you're using it, is at least 60% alcohol. The alcohol in it is actually what's killing the, the viruses, bacteria, and parasites, and all those things. Making sure you're looking at between antibacterial and antimicrobial. Microbial. Antibacterial is just going to kill bacteria, whereas an antimicrobial hand sanitizer is going to focus on the bacteria, the funguses, the parasites, the, some viruses. So it's going to be a little bit more extensive. Uh, don't use alcohol-free products, um, vodkas. Even though it is alcohol, some people are trying to use vodka. Um, most vodkas aren't at least 60% alcohol, so they're not going to be effective. But the bottom line is, if you have access to washing your hands, that comes first and foremost, because that's going to be the most effective way to you know, clean the hands 
uh, and get rid of any bad bacteria, fungus, ver uh, viruses, and, and parasites. But uh, hand sanitizer can be a last resort. And then along those lines, this is a great video that actually shows you how to wash your hands. I know it sounds uh, kind of stupid, but uh, if you watch the video, you're going to see there's definitely areas that you're probably missing when you're washing your hands. And we'll uh, play this for you so you can see. So he puts ink on his hands. He's wearing gloves and basically showing what you should do with your hands in order to get every inch or square inch of your hands washed to get any bacteria, viruses, parasites, all that bad stuff off your hands. The thumb is probably one that I know myself often forget. So that is an area to remember as well as the fingernails like he just did. So there you have it. Wouldn't it be a great feeling to know that even if someone coughed in your face, you're less likely, likely to get sick because you have a strong immune system. Now you have all the information you need to build a strong immune system. If all this information was overwhelming because there was a lot of it, don't worry, I'm here to help. Feel free to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and we can go over in more detail, specifically uh, what you need for your own health. The body is an amazing thing and has the ability to heal itself. So let's take care of ourselves and support our immune systems. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me for this educational webinar. My goal was to teach you at least one thing that you could implement today for a healthier immune system. If I did that, then I was a successful day for me um, and uh, we can all live a happier and healthier life. So I'm Dr. Merhut with Elite Sports and Spine Chiropractic. Uh, stay healthy, everyone.